Hello, everybody, and welcome to our SBT teaching. My name is Venerable Tarpa. Before we begin, let's take a moment to appreciate our community gathered here today. Today, I feel fortunate to sit as a member of this kind community in the safety and security of like-minded friends, sharing this present moment with others dedicated to the cultivation of goodness. Today, I'm grateful for the direction and support that this community provides, a community worthy of my time and commitment, a community where my efforts have meaning, purpose, and are appreciated. Today, I'm thankful for this community of awakening, a place to gain the knowledge and skills to improve my life, a family, a home, and a sanctuary for all of us seeking refuge from the storm. And let's remember, as conscientious practitioners, we must recognize our responsibility to the world, to strive to live skillfully while helping others to do the same, to strive to live in balance and harmony with nature and others, to strive to gain mastery over our minds and embody our true benevolent nature, to expand our hearts and minds, transcending our shared human limitations, to not intentionally harm sentient life or our planet, and to maturely accept and embrace the reality of our situation while striving to improve it. Again, welcome everybody to today's teaching. Today we're going to be examining taking lay ordination. We have some new members taking lay ordination this month. Um, as you know, we begin to engage with the Buddhist path through study, practice, and training. Um, many first come to Buddhism through study, reading books and attending teachings, or through practice by attending meditation programs. However, when practitioners become serious about their path, they may wish to begin their formal Buddhist training. Training begins with taking refuge and receiving refuge vows. After a considerable amount of time uh, with studying, practicing, and, and training on refuge vows, practitioners may wish to deepen their practice and further them by taking bodhisattva vows. Then, after more study, practice, and training on one's bodhisattva vows, practitioners may wish to again deepen their practice further by taking lay ordination. In Buddhism, the practice of ordination dates back to the time of the Buddha himself, some two millennia ago. Since that time, it's, it has pertain primarily to monastics, to monks and nuns who make up the Buddhist monastic Sangha. However, in our modern age, the line between monastic and lay, lay means non-monastic, is often blurred with many lay practitioners practicing like monastics and likewise many monastics being drawn to a lay lifestyle. Historically, there's always been a strong distinction between the two groups, which helped to define both. Because to be a monastic can be defined as to not be lay, and vice versa. To be a lay person means to not be a monastic. But today, I believe there's a growing need for greater diversity of choices in training on the Buddhist path. The idea of lay ordination in Buddhism is a new one. The concept was first brought to me by some of our Sangha members who wanted, to, wanted a way to deepen their practice beyond refuge and bodhisattva training, but were not able, for whatever the reason, to commit to a monastic lifestyle. Lay ordination in SBT offers practitioners an alternative for deepening their training beyond traditional lay vows, offering a vigorous training program while still allowing them to remain engaged in lay life. But to be clear, ordination, whether monastic or lay, is a serious commitment for serious practitioners. It requires great dedication, diligence, effort, and a sincere motivation for spiritual awakening. 
the various levels of training in SBT. Um, so we have study and practice, as we mentioned, and then we have uh, we have study, which is book study, going to teachings, and and studying life experientially through real life experiences. We have practice, which we most people think of as meditation, mindfulness. But then we have this idea of training. And training is usually related to our vows and training in awakened behavior. And for SBT, uh, we have we begin with refuge level vows, which is our initial 10 precepts. Then after about a year, uh, practitioners may wish to move on to taking bodhisattva vows, which is an additional 26 precepts that lay on top of those 10. And then for very serious practitioners, they may wish to take lay ordination and the vows that, that come with that. Lay ordination is an additional 46 precepts, which are laid upon the 10 refuge precepts, the 26 bodhisattva precepts. And in the future, we're going to be offering monastic ordination, maybe hopefully sometime this year. Um, monastic ordination uh, comes with 76 precepts. Um, so a person would go through these steps, but after taking lay ordination, they would give up the 46 precepts of lay ordination to take on the 76 precepts of monastic ordination. Those are the only two that aren't built upon. Let's take uh, just a moment to understand the idea of vows and precepts within Buddhism. So vows are defined as a solemn pledge or promise, whereas precepts are defined as guidelines of personal conduct intended to facilitate swift spiritual progress. In other words, taking vows is a promise to uphold guidelines or precepts of virtuous and awakened behavior. Vows are always taken voluntarily with the practitioner deciding for themselves just how committed they wish to be. According to the Dalai Lama, precepts are not absolute rules, but instead guidelines intended to stabilize and deepen our commitment to our spiritual path. Each precept outlines clear and precise parameters pertaining to our intentional behavior. Um, holding presets creates a great level of clarity and stability in one's life by outlining predetermined behaviors that clearly dictate appropriate intentions, actions, and reactions. By maintaining pure precepts, we protect and increase our mental, emotional, and spiritual development. For in moments of difficulty or indecision, in which we may not be, uh, we may be susceptible to making poor choices, our precepts remain clear. It's at these times that we can rely on our precepts to protect us and ensure that our intentions, our choices, actions, and reactions are appropriate and coincide with the Buddhist teachings. I wanted to take a moment to clarify the difference between traditional lay vows and SBT's lay ordained vows. So traditionally lay vows, also known as Householder vows consist of five precepts, and which is not killing, not stealing, not lying about spiritual accomplishment, accomplishments, not taking intoxicants, and not gauge, engaging in sexual misconduct, which is sexual harm, either mental, emotional, or physical. Within SBT, most of the five precepts, the lay five precepts, are already included within our refuge vows, um, where in contrast, SBT's lay or ordination vows are much deeper and more challenging, consisting of 46 precepts of awakened behavior. Lay ordained vows are taken for one's entire life, 
although they can be given back uh, to your preceptor if necessary. The lay ordained precepts were not established for convenience, but rather to facilitate swift awakening. They aid us in recognizing and clarifying which aspects of ourselves and our lives are to be cultivated and which ones are, be, are to be abandoned. Um, another, uh, one way to, um, in many ways it's easier to understand lay ordination in comparison to monastic ordination and what specific precepts uh, differentiate the two. Uh, so here I have a short list of some of those things. So these are things that lay ordained are allowed and monastic ordination is not. First, that lay ordained can work for profit, engage in commerce, trade, or credit. Lay ordained can own a home and possessions. Lay ordained are free to pursue romantic relationships, engage in virtuous sexual activity, get married, establish families. Lay ordained can wear lay clothes. Uh, and because lay ordained are part of the lay community, they can engage in social lay events like recreational activities, entertainment, uh, hobbies, sports, dancing, singing, playing instruments, and relationship oriented events and, and traditions. Many of these things would be frowned upon by uh, monastics. And I'd also like to share with you another piece. Um, let me put this on the screen for you all. I wanted to go over some of the reasons that uh, someone may decide to take lay ordination. The first is to further our practice. So first and foremost, lay ordination is taken to, to benefit and advance your spiritual path, period. Providing a framework and clear direction to deepen our practice. Uh, it offers us an opportunity to engage and immerse ourselves fully within the teachings, leading to a greater understanding and realization of the Buddha Dharma. Number two, to swiftly attain our aims. By taking lay ordination, we can intensify our spiritual efforts and progress. Uh, the additional commitment and, uh, and discipline can help us to stay focused and dedicated to the path, enhancing our chances of realizing our aims within this lifetime. Number three, to better serve the Sangha. Lay ordination creates a, a, a wonderful opportunity for us to serve our community better and, uh, and the broader Sangha uh, in, a, in a greater capacity. This in, uh, can involve volunteer work, participating in community leadership, community projects, or assisting an organization and supporting various Buddhist activities. Our active contribution to the welfare of the Sangha helps create uh, a positive connection and generates a sense of fulfillment for everyone involved. Number four, uh, validation and credentials. So lay ordination can provide us with formal recognition of our commitment and our experience in Buddha Dharma. It can add credibility to our spiritual journey, uh, demonstrating our dedication and sincerity of our path to others. This validation can enhance our confidence, inspire others, and open doors for sharing our knowledge, skills, and experience with others. Number five, working in a Buddhist capacity. 
So lay ordained can participate in various roles related to the Dharma, like meditation instructor, Dharma teacher, scholar, spiritual counseling, uh, retreat facilitator, community leaders, ceremony coordinators, uh, translators, interpreters, authors, social workers, uh, 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 clergy or chaplain work. Uh, and end-of-life care, um, just to name a few. Number six, creating a Dharma environment. So lay ordination helps us to cultivate and maintain a Dharma-centered environment in our daily lives. By living as an example of the Buddha's teachings, we can create a positive influence on those around us, contributing to a more harmonious and supportive family and home atmosphere, workplace environment, and communities in general. Oh, I'm just posting another thing here. I'd like to, I'd like to go over the, oh, I'm sorry, I have the wrong thing up here. My fault. I wanted to get over, go over this piece on eligibility for lay ordination. So there are a few things that that a practitioner that's had bodhisattva vows uh, needs to accomplish or attain to be eligible for lay ordination. Um, number one, possess a genuine maturity. And we mean the maturity of a practitioner that, uh, that through extensive practice and experience, um, we've, uh, we've tamed our minds and uh, and we're mature practitioners. That's something that the teacher can see in the student. Number two is possessing renunciation, a sincere wish to awaken and a strong determination to be free of samsara. I, I always think the, uh, the, the best definition of renunciation that Tibetans liked was the wish for freedom. Renunciation, re, to the, the desire to renounce samsara because of your wish to be free of it. That's uh, real pretty. Number three is uh, possessing bodhicitta in some capacity. And bodhicitta is, of course, the altruistic intention to awaken in order to liberate oneself and others from suffering. Number four, possessing right view, the proper understanding of the Buddhist teachings and the true nature of oneself and reality. Number five, having held refuge in bodhisattva vows for uh, bodhisattva vows for at least a year. Number six, possessing a willingness to adhere to the precepts and guidelines, which is of course true at all levels of vow taking, but it's even more important here in uh, in lay ordain vows. Uh, and number seven, possessing a sincere respect and appreciation for the Sangha and teachers. And this is a traditional vow that's, uh, or, or eligibility requirement. And the idea that <clears throat> lay ordained practitioners are going to be strongly uh, affiliated with the Sangha. They're going to be working strongly in the Sangha to support the Sangha, to, to, to promote the Sangha. So it's really important that the, uh, they have the proper attitude and, um, and we, we can all work together harmoniously. Okay. I thought maybe we could go over the lay ordained vows. Now, there's a lot here. I thought I would read through them on the, on the website. So... Uh, if you go to the programs page of our website and you go to the Lay Ordain uh, tab and you click on that, you'll come to the Lay Ordain page. And if you go to the bottom of that, you'll see a uh, study materials button. 
you can click on that and all of our lay ordained study materials are every, it's open to everyone and you can you can view anything you want but within that there's a document that's a commentary on the lay ordained vows. So instead of going deeply in them here, I think our commentary explains them very well. But what I'd like to do is just go through and read them through, okay? So uh, the eight root precepts are to live as an example towards others, to abstain from intoxicants, to be truthful about spiritual attainments, to engage in proper livelihood, to cultivate choicelessness, to refrain, refrain from gambling, waging, wagering, and games of chance, to avoid places of non-virtuous activity, to avoid non-virtuous media. The 11 secondary precepts are to behave in a dignified manner, to care for my mind and body, to commit to at least two meditations daily, to renounce extreme views, to renounce excess and extravagance, to not manipulate others, to not create mental or emotional suffering in others, to not use donations for personal use, to attain donations through proper means, to not distinguish between those with wealth and those without, to not sit on thrones or elevated seats. The five precepts of living, to wear the sign of ordination, which is the sash that you see many of our members wearing, to dress humbly and moderately, modestly, to renounce the exploitation of sentient life, to move towards a whole food plant-based diet, to consume food in moderation and balance. The 14 precepts of Sangha, <clears throat> to support, nurture, and care for the Sangha, to honor our responsibility to the Sangha, to participate in the work of the Sangha, to respect, value, and appreciate the monastic Sangha, to nurture the faith and confidence of practitioners, to honor our responsibility to the environment, to not use the Sangha for personal gain or profit, to not use the Sangha for political purposes, to not create division in the Sangha, to not revive subtle disputes, to not publicly criticize other SBT ordained Sangha, to not falsely accuse others without basis, <coughs> to not hinder or create obstacles for others, to not show favoritism. <coughs> Excuse me. And the last eight precepts of Buddha Dharma to not teach the Buddha Dharma without being qualified, to not teach the Buddha Dharma without being asked to not proselytize, to not assert spiritual or intellectual authority over others, to not assert superiority of the Buddha Dharma, to not assert superiority of one's views, to respect the intelligence and minds of others, to respect others' beliefs, traditions, and cultures. And now I'd like to talk about the study practice and training, the actual practices that um, someone taking lay ordination is committed to. So as we've, we've talked about before, within Buddhism, the path to happiness, <clears throat> including awakening nirvana or enlightenment, is cultivated through the Buddhist threefold path the development of higher virtue, of higher understanding, and higher awareness. At the lay ordained level, daily, daily training and practice consists of, a drum roll please, <clears throat> so, so we start with continuing to uphold one's refuge vows. So each layer of levels is built upon the last. So when you've uh, when you've gone from refuge to bodhisattva vows the idea is that you have these practices down but we don't stop practicing them we just focus and, and bring more material to bear as we get comfortable habituate ourselves to the material and we're able to practice deeper so <clears throat> at lay ordained level we'll continue to uphold our 
refuge vows, will continue to cultivate the Four Noble Truths through the practices of the Four Tasks, the Eightfold Path, Abiding on the Breath, and the SBT Practice of Shining. At the, at the next level, we continue to uphold our Bodhisattva vows uh, to continue to cultivate Bodhicitta, the mind, the altruistic mind of awakening, through the practices of the six perfections, mind training, abiding in emptiness, and the practice of shining. <clears throat> and the new lay ordained ordain practices, we uh, study, practice, and uphold one's lay ordained vows, precepts, and commitments, and cultivating and realizing awakening itself through the study, contemplation, and meditation, and through the practices of taking the result of as the path and the practice of shining. So these can all be found uh, again on the lay, lay ordained study material page. And I'll make these, uh, these uh, slides available for anybody that needs them. And I'm doing great on time. I was worried it was a lot to share. So <clears throat> this Monday, we're going to be offering uh, uh, a new, uh, we're going to be offering uh, ref, uh, lave ordination to some new Sangha members. Um, and we're very excited about that. Um, now, beyond lay ordination for SBT, the next l level would be taking monastic vows. Now, I don't necessarily like to think of lay ordained vows and monastic ordained vows as one being higher than the other. They're simply different paths that allow people a choice in lifestyle. Basically, the goal of both is the same. The practices are the same. Of course, monastic lifestyle is more disciplined and it's deeper, um, where you, you literally practice the Dharma 24 seven, but it's really, they're there for the, uh, for, for lifestyle choice for people practicing the Dharma. But um, somebody that wishes to take monastic vows, they would need to hold lay vows for, lay ordained vows for a year before doing so. And uh, our monastic vows, again, are to uphold 76 precepts of awakened behavior. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions? I've been talking and talking and talking. What do you guys think? How many people are going to take Lear donation this Monday? I'm just kidding. There's a one. We got one. Yeah. We have a couple people that were interested, but I think that they need to work a little bit on their bodhisattva vows. So it's, uh, it's going to be really exciting. Everybody's welcome to attend the ceremony. It's going to be wonderful. It's the day after our retreat, right? Okay, great. So with that said, um, uh, why don't we end today's teaching with our altruistic affirmation? I think that's about all I wanted to share. May all be healthy. May all be prosperous. May all be well. May all be present, free of past regret and future worry. May all abide in constant appreciation, which is a source of great joy and contentment. May all realize their true nature and the true nature of reality, which is awakening. Thanks everybody for coming. Please remember that the SBT community was created for one purpose, to support you, the practitioner. Thanks everybody. See you later. Bye. -bye. Thank you, Tarpa. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.